안녕하세요. 마이르는 선생님입니다. And welcome to another lesson in pre-calculus. Our topic is solving problems involving conic sections. For the expected learning outcome, you are expected to solve situational problems involving the different conic sections. In solving different word problems involving conic sections, we must know first the different properties of the different conic sections, both the non-degenerate conics and the degenerate conics. And those were discussed on the previous topic. So let's begin with sample problem number one. Circle has center at the focus of the parabola y squared plus 16x plus 4y equals 44 and is tangent to the directrix of this parabola. Find its standard equation. Okay, so for us to find the standard equation of the circle, we have to make use of the given, which is the equation of the parabola. So first, we need to rewrite this into its standard form so that we can find the focus. Okay, let's begin in rewriting these parabola into its standard form. So we have the group first, y squared, with 4y plus blank. Why do we have to put plus blank? It is for the completing square. And then we'll have 16x with the use of addition property of equality. We have to add negative 16 on both sides. So Assuming that we already have plus negative 16x here, this will become 0. And then on the other side, we'll also have negative 16x. Okay, and then 4y is already on this group. And then we have 44 on the right side of the equation. Next, we'll proceed with completing the square. So for us to find the missing term or the third term, we have to look at the coefficient of the middle term, that is, Four. So we have 4 divided by 2 squared. So 4 divided by 2 is 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4. Since we added the number here, it must also be added on the other side of the equation so that we retain the identity of the equation. So plus 4 here because we also have plus 4 on the left side. So we are almost done in rewriting it into its standard form. We have to rewrite this perfect square trinomial into a square of binomial using the shortcut. So y squared, the, the square root of y squared is y, so we write y, and then copy the sign of the middle term, we have plus, and then the square root of the last term, which we added a while ago, that is square root of 4, we have 2. So y squared plus 4y plus 4 is actually the square of y plus 2 or the quantity of y plus 2 squared equals we have negative 16x plus 44 plus 4 is 48. So for the last step, we'll simply factor out negative 16. So we have here negative 16 times x because we have negative 16x divided by negative 16 since we factored out plus 48 divided by negative 16. They are unlike signs, so it will become negative. So instead of plus, we'll have here minus 48 divided by 16, that is 3. So we have negative 16 times the quantity of x minus 3 on the right side of the equation. We are done with the standard form of the given parabola. Okay, so for the continuation, we have the quantity of y plus 2 squared equals negative 16 times the quantity of x minus 3. It's still the same parabola, but this time it's written in standard form. So for us to find the focus, we have to identify first the opening of the parabola. Since we have here negative 16 or negative 4c, and this is y squared, meaning it opens to the left. So the parabola actually opens to the left. Okay, now we may solve for the value of c. So c or 4c here is 16. We write 4c equals 16. Okay, and then divide both sides by 4. Because we are solving for c, we have c equals 16 divided by 4, that is 4. And then this time, we'll look at the vertex. h is always with x, so we have here 3. Remember, when we take out the number, it becomes the opposite sign. So we have 3, and then k is always with y, so 
this becomes negative 2. The vertex is a 3, negative 2. So we have the vertex are 3, negative 2. C is equal to 4. Remember that C is the distance of the focus from the vertex. Okay, and then since it opens to the left, meaning the movement will be along the x-axis. So we'll alright, so to find the focus we have f and that will be by subtracting 4 on the x coordinate. So we have or from the x coordinate 3 minus 4 that is negative 1. Why subtract? Because it moves or opens to the left, meaning since the focus is inside the curve, we'll have to move to the left. And moving to the left means negative. Okay, so negative 1 and negative 2. Okay, now we'll find the directrix line. So the equation of the directrix line, remember it's outside the curve. So since it opens to the left, the line will be here on its right side. Meaning we have to add 4 on the x-coordinate. So the directrix line will be intersecting the x-axis. That will be x equals 3 plus 4, that is 7. Why add? Because you move to the right. From the vertex, you move to the right of C unit. So that is 3 plus 4. Okay, so based on the problem a while ago, the circle has the center, which is the focus of the given parabola. Meaning we already have the center of the circle. That is negative 1, negative 2. And it was mentioned that it's tangent. So tangent to the directrix line, meaning it's tangent to x equals 7. Since we already have the center, what we need now is the radius. Now, we can actually have the radius by simply looking at the tangent and the x-coordinate of the center. Why? The radius will be the distance from the x-coordinate of the circle to its point of tangency, which is x equals 7 or 7, 0. And that will be, if we compute for the distance, 7 minus negative 1. Actually, if we have the graph, we may simply count it. Okay, so 7 minus negative 1 will be 7 plus 1. And that is 8 units. Therefore, the radius is equal to 8 units. Okay, there you go. So we have the center at negative 1, negative 2. Again, that is the focus of the given parabola. And then we have the radius 8 units. We compared the distance of the x-coordinate of the center going to that of the point of tangency, 7, 0. So we have to simply substitute these numbers or values on the standard form of equation of the circle. Quantity of x minus h, remember h is the negative 1. So x minus negative 1 squared plus quantity of y minus, this one's k, negative 2. So minus negative 2 squared is equal to r is 8, so we have 8 squared. Simplify minus negative gives us plus or positive. Quantity of x minus x plus one, sorry, the quantity of x plus one squared plus quantity of y plus two squared equals eight times eight is sixty-four. And we're done with the first sample problem. Nashanika, it's been a long process, but still we were able to solve for sample problem number one. Watch out for the next sample problem later.